Hi everyone, Professor Stefaro here, and the screencast today is on the cytoskeleton. The image that you see here is a micrograph using a light microscope, but the cytoskeletal elements have been fluoresced, um, and it shows the pattern, the distribution of those cytoskeletal elements. Uh, we're going to see that they're going to be used in movement and support and communication. Uh, what you see here are two fibroblast cells. These are cells that help to make connective tissues. The area of research surrounding the cytoskeleton is pretty hot these days. There are lots of conferences and other resources that scientists are engaging in to talk about the hottest topic which is what are called molecular motors or motor proteins and we're going to talk about those as a part of this screencast as well. It's one of those fascinating areas of biology that's just come up in since about 2005-2004. Let's compare our own skeleton to that of the cytoskeleton. Our own skeleton functions to give us support for the soft tissues that attach to it. It gives our body its form, its size, its shape. And in fact, if you don't have it, you would just be a mass of soft tissue like a slug. The skeleton in your body also provides for movement. Muscles attach to the bones. The bones come together at articulating points, all of that providing movement. These characteristics are true for the cytoskeleton of the cell as well, providing for support, movement, and communication within the cell itself. The cytoskeleton ends up being a network of protein fibers that's going to provide for movement, for transport, and for structural support. From our own textbook, we can see the illustration of an animal cell at the top left and a plant cell at the bottom right. And the blue arrows are pointing to elements of the cytoskeleton. There are three main types, intermediate filaments, microfilaments, and microtubules. This picture here shows the distribution of those three type of filaments in cells, each of them isolated. The first one, the microtubule, is distributed starting from the nucleus and we'll talk about the fact that these tubules originate from a structure that's near the nucleus. The third are the intermediate filaments in blue. Notice that they kind of wrap themselves around the nucleus and in the end they help to hold it in place. Then the last are the actin or microfilaments and they are found around the edges of the cell because they are going to be used to move the cell at the edge. Here are some cells that are moving at the edge. It's called ruffling. See the edges of the cell at the top? How it flutters on its end? That's due to the presence of microfilaments in the cell. Let's dig a little deeper and discuss each type of cytoskeletal element. The first is the intermediate filament. It consists of many subunits that build a fiber-like structure that acts like scaffolding to hold the nucleus in place. Intermediate filaments are found in animal cells that require a lot of strength, such as the epithelial cells of the skin. Some of these filaments span the length of the cell, connecting cell-cell junctions called desmosomes. These cables of intermediate filaments have a high tensile strength. Without these filaments, stretching or pressure on the epithelial sheet would cause it to rupture. Each filament is rope-like, consisting of eight thinner strands made of a precise hierarchical arrangement of protein subunits. An electron micrograph shows the appearance of intermediate filaments that have been assembled in a test tube. 
Next is the microfilament. Microfilament is the smallest element of the cytoskeleton. It's made up of actin protein. It helps to support the cell shape, but mostly it's involved in cell movement. Here we see an amoeba moving in response to its surroundings, but it uses actin filaments to do so. This single-celled amoeba crawls around by using actin polymerization to push out pseudopods, or false feet, to explore new territory. The last is probably the most important of our three types. It's the microtubule. These are hollow structures made of tubulin proteins. Microtubules act as tracks to move vesicles or they will act as tracks to move chromosomes within the cell. They're going to be the basis for the structure of cilia and flagella, something that we'll talk about in a, another screencast. Here we can see in this cell the green represents the microtubules that are attached to the blue chromosomes here. And during mitosis, those tubules are used to pull on the chromosomes and place them into two new cells. Microtubules arise from a part of the cell called the centrosome. The centrosome is made up of two bodies called centrioles and this ends up being the microtubule generating center. So remember I said microtubules are formed near the nucleus? Well this structure lies very close to it and here we see its structure itself. These are the two paired centrioles made up of microtubules and then those are used to generate more microtubules within the cell. This figure illustrates the idea of microtubules being used as tracks within the cell to move vesicles. Early in the 2000, research began to focus on molecular motors or motor proteins. These use the microtubules as tracks to carry vesicles like those associated with the endomembrane system. They seem to involve guiding the material to different locations within the cell. Here's a motor protein. We can see that it uses ATP energy as a way to create that movement. So anytime there's movement in the cell, there's got to be ATP powering that movement. Those microtubules, the research is showing, have a lot to do with stopping substances, yielding them, turning them into the right part of the cell or not. So there's more work to be done. Hope you enjoyed the video. Bye. The cytoskeleton is comprised of networks of filamentous proteins that are responsible for the spatial organization of cytosolic components. Inside microvilli, actin filaments form tight parallel bundles, which are stabilized by cross-linking proteins. While deeper in the cytosol, the actin network adopts a gel-like structure, stabilized by a variety of actin-binding proteins. Filaments, capped at their minus ends by a protein complex, grow away from the plasma membrane by the addition of actin monomers to their plus end. The actin network is a very dynamic structure with continuous directional polymerization and disassembly. Severing proteins induce kinks in the filament and lead to the formation of short fragments that rapidly depolymerize or give rise to new filaments. The cytoskeleton includes a network of microtubules created by the lateral association of protofilaments formed by the polymerization of tubulin dimers. While the plus ends of some microtubules extend toward the plasma membrane, proteins stabilize the curved conformation of protofilaments from other microtubules, causing their rapid plus end depolymerization. Microtubules provide tracks along which membrane-bound vesicles travel to and from the plasma membrane. 
The directional movement of these cargo vesicles is due to a family of motor proteins linking vesicles and microtubules. Me Hi everyone, Professor Stefaro here, and this green cast is on the sky to sky to sky to skeleton. EB1 is a protein that binds to the GTP tubulin cap at the growing ends of microtubules. Cells expressing a GFP EB1 fusion protein reveal the spectacular dynamics of the microtubule cytoskeleton. Note that many, but not all, microtubules in this cell grow from the centrosome. Only the ends of growing microtubules are visible in this experiment. Those that are static or shrinking have lost their GTP tubulin caps and do not bind EB1. In contrast, when all microtubules are labeled with GFP tubulin, the true extent of the microtubule cytoskeleton emerges. Both growing and shrinking microtubules can be observed. The cytoskeleton is a network of protein fibers that determines the shape of cells without cell walls, provides for the movement of cells, provides for the structural support and movement of organelles within the cell, and provides the framework for moving and separating chromosomes during cell division. The three types of protein fibers that make up the cytoskeleton are thick microtubules, thin microfilaments, and medium-sized intermediate filaments. Microtubules are hollow tubes assembled from subunits made out of the protein tubulin. Subunits not forming microtubules are dissolved and scattered throughout the cytoplasm. As subunits are readily available, microtubules can be assembled and disassembled as required by the cell. Subunits are assembled into microtubules by microtubule organizing centers found at various locations within the cell. All eukaryotic cells have a microtubule organizing center near the nucleus, called the centrosome. During cell division, the centrosome produces a football-shaped array of microtubules called the spindle apparatus that separates chromosomes and divides them between the two new daughter cells. In animal cells, a pair of organelles called centrioles are located by or in the centrosome. Centrioles are short, barrel-shaped rings with nine microtubule triplets forming their outer edge. As a cell prepares to divide, the centrioles are duplicated, and one pair moves to each daughter cell. In cells that have structures called cilia and flagella, the centrioles multiply and move to the surface of the cell where they become anchored just beneath the plasma membrane forming basal bodies. Ten pairs of microtubules 
grow out of each basal body. One pair grows from the center of the basal body, while the other nine pairs form the outer infrastructure of a cilia or flagellum. A gap, the width of a microtubule, exists between each of the outer microtubule pairs. Numerous motor proteins firmly attached to one pair of microtubules have legs that cross the gap and can walk on the adjacent microtubule pair. The force applied by the motor proteins causes the microtubules to bend. The synchronized movement of large columns of motor proteins attached to microtubule pairs trying to walk up or down adjacent pairs creates the rowing motion of cilia and the wave-like motion of flagellum. Cilia, Latin for eyelash, are short and numerous structures that extend from the cell membrane. Cilia move single-celled organisms such as paramecium through their environment with a rowing motion. Flagella, meaning whip in Latin, are usually considerably longer than cilia and fewer in number. Flagella move in a wave or whip-like motion. The sperm of most animals and algae rely on flagella for movement, as do a number of single-celled organisms such as euglenoids. Microtubules are also believed to be involved with the movement of organelles, such as vesicles, within the cytoplasm. One hypothesis holds that vesicles and other organelles have receptor proteins to which motor proteins attach and then walk an organelle to its destination via the network of microtubules that extends throughout the cytoplasm.